My name is Mukda Pradhan. I am uh, an activist change the name on my Zoom account also. Well, would you mind turning on your cameras, please, just before we start so that I can see who you are? Because I, I like these webinars to be interactive and uh, where you can exchange thoughts. Hello. Hi, Sanjay. Hello. Can you hear me? See me? Yes, yes. What okay. about you, uh, Paul and Samir? Hello. Hello. There, there seems to be a problem with the login uh, link. It takes you to Zoom uh, password login. It took a lot of uh, attempts to log in. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah, sorry. Right. Um, okay, so my name is Mukda Pradhan, like I was just saying. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of iThrive. And uh, what we do is we make a lot of diseases disappear. We also work on prevention and we also work on uh, mitigating as in like reducing the effects of uh, any sort of disease. And uh, we started this series of, uh, no problem Paul, as long as you can hear me all right. Uh, we started this series of webinars because uh, now we've literally been working with 158 different diseases and uh, we kind of have garnered a lot of knowledge in the process. I am a functional nutritionist myself. I have a master's degree in nutrition and I've been doing this work since 2017. And we just thought that every week, if we could talk about a specific subject about which there wasn't too much knowledge in the outside world, we should be able to start helping more and more people that's the real intention of why we started doing this, this series. And uh, today we are focusing on the topic of autism. But uh, before I start uh, giving you my insights, I just wanted to know what brought you to this webinar. Why, why are you here? <clears throat> what brought you here, uh, Samir? Yeah, it was uh, interesting uh, uh, analyzing what actually is. Yeah, your uh, face is cut up. Like, I can see more of the window and less of you. Yeah, this is. Uh, it is a uh, uh, interesting analyzing the uh, what is autism. Is it by birth? Is it by uh, genes? Is it uh, acquired because of some uh, behavioral pattern which we can correct later on? So that was the interesting. Uh, that was the interest in joining this okay. webinar. And uh, do you know someone who has been diagnosed with autism? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, what about you? Maybe uh, autism, maybe some, something else. I'm not sure what is autism. Okay. Yeah. Is it a behavior in the trait or is it like something else? Is yeah. it a brain related to brain or what? That also we'll talk about. Uh, Sanjay, what brought you here? Uh, I am a father of a 17-year-old autistic child, my son. So it has been for me and my wife a journey of discovery on what is autism. So every time we have an opportunity to listen to some additional views, mm -hmm. we always want to add to our knowledge um, because it's a a very interesting disorder. Uh, that's what I've observed. Um, some of the most intelligent people on the planet are autistic. Yes. And on the other end of the spectrum, it can be extremely challenging for the person. So it's not one, it's a spectrum as we know. Um, so yeah, it's a area of interest because my son is, my younger child is autistic. Um, and also I'm very curious what is it, Mukda, you wanted to share and hear from you? And how did you find out about iThrive? How did you find out about this webinar? Oh, yeah. Your friend is my personal trainer, Mira. So oh, she. Okay, all right, great. She, told she mentioned me that. Yeah, yeah, she mentioned you are going to do this session. 
Meera knows my son very well, and she said, "You know, Sanjay, you'll benefit," and that's the background. All right, great, great to uh, know that uh, you because she told me that you had enrolled. Yeah. How did you find out about us, Samir? Ah, uh, I keep uh, dabbling here and there on the internet, and some somehow uh, somebody must have uh, known my name, or uh, that, that is why I, how I got the invitation by email. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, uh, Ronit, I think Akhil had some question. For, uh, he was asking us to turn subtitles on. I don't know how to do that. It's not enabled in the settings. I mean, it's not possible right now oh, for the meeting. Cool, cool. We will do that for the next webinar. Yeah. And Paul, what brought you here? You could, if, if your internet connectivity is an issue, you could just leave uh, a message in the chat. All right. So to answer the question of what is autism also, right? Uh, basically, see, it's, it's like <laughs> conventional medicine doctors usually want a diagnosis or they want a word that they can quickly hand on a prescription to people saying that, you know, you suffer from X, Y, Z. And even if you look at the technical explanation of autism, it's basically it just says that it's a range of neurodevelopment conditions characterized by difficulties in social interactions, communication, um, intense interests, uh, repetitive behaviors, and un uh, unusual responses to sensory stimuli. So it's such a vague, uh, vague definition of what the uh, dysfunction is that often. Somebody who might just be a slightly different person can get categorized into the autism spectrum disorder. This is not to take away through cases of autism where, you know, uh, the ability to live life and experience life fully gets hampered. So I'm not denying that. I, I know parents where, uh, you know, the, the child is so affected that it really becomes hard to kind of do anything uh, that... Uh, non-autistic kids would be able to do but sometimes like I actually had a consult just yesterday with one lady who said that my child is autism and then as we discussed more and it, it just even the doctor who had given the diagnosis to the lady had just met the child for five minutes not even five minutes like just a doctor's visit right like you just go in the doctor has a parent a few patients and then they leave um, and like the deeper I went in and the more I asked, the kid was just three years old and uh, just born before the lockdowns. And in 2020, late 2020, uh, this lady and her husband, both of them got COVID. So the kid had to be left with the grandparents for 15 days. And after the kid came back, the kid actually uh, displayed a lot of uh, social changes in social behavior, including... Um, attachment, excessive attachment, insecurity, inability to be alone and all of that. Now, this behavior, I mean, if you, even if I think from my daughter's perspective, is not something that's so out of ordinary that the child should be diagnosed with a dysfunction. Um, sometimes there are just wrong diagnoses given, but sometimes it is it is truly a neuro, neuro, neuro developmental disorder. And in that case, then there are many things that need to be done, right? So, I am not a psychiatrist, I am not a pediatric psychologist, so I am not the one who actually does the diagnosis. What our expertise lies in is finding out what is really going on inside the body. So, even if somebody comes to us with diabetes, for example, hi Tanuj. Um, so hi Mukta, how are you doing? Doing great. So, even if somebody comes to us with a diagnosis, like even if it's something like diabetes or high BP, right, we never start working on the diagnosis, what we do is we look at what's really happening in the body and start working on that. So when I say start working in the body, looking in the body, we basically start off with blood tests to understand what is the status of internal health. And then when need be, we might go into more advanced tests to figure out what exactly is going on. Now in cases of uh, kids who are on the spectrum, right? Like anywhere on the spectrum they might be from mild to extremely severe autism the root causes that we have seen uh, see one is of course a, a developmental injury in utero or uh, even at birth right like 
fetal injury. So, for example, uh, mothers who have this MTFHR gene mutation. Like this is not even the child. This is the mother who has a MTFHR gene. That's a gene that actually processes B complex vitamins, including folate. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's an enzyme that is made. So mothers who have a genetic mutation there don't have the enzyme to process these nutrients. And then because of that, when the baby is developing, right? Because folate is a very vital nutrient for brain development from spine to brain. But because of that gene mutation, there's a chance that the baby's brain might not develop appropriately. And then because of that, the baby, like the child could be born with uh, neurodevelopmental issues. So that is one case scenario where it is actually a uh, at birth issue itself. Um, even things like uh, birthing difficulties, uh, delayed crying or uh, in the past, now it's not that much, but in the past, even these suction or uh, forcep kind of deliveries would call, cause some kind of physical injury and then these would lead to neurodevelopmental disorders, right? So that is something that uh, we have limited success with, right? Like it's not something that we can really do too much about because it's a physical uh, injury and it's, 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 it's there now. But what we've seen is often there are a lot of kids who due to either deficiencies, right? So children need a lot of nutrients, especially for brain development from omega-3 fatty acids to uh, B nutrients. I mean, all the B complex nutrients to good quality protein, good quality fat to magnesium. So Often when children don't get enough of these nutrients, their brains might not function the way they're supposed to. So deficiencies often are a uh, root cause of some of the kids showing up with uh, signs of being on the spectrum. The second and more common that we've seen in the uh, uh, kids with uh, autism is when they have a toxin overload. Okay, so what do I mean by toxin? And I'll show you. So I'll show you how we are able to diagnose this also. I'll show you some... Uh, examples of the advanced tests and everything that we do. But often we've seen like mercury, aluminum, uh, even other heavy metal overloads, uh, which could come in from the environment, which could have come in even from uh, the medication that were prescribed. Sometimes the liver is not so great at processing toxins. But because of a heavy metal overload or because of a toxic overload, some children's brains actually start functioning differently than they should. And because the brain is not functioning the way it, it should, uh, when, when the child doesn't meet a developmental milestone or when the child exhibits erratic behavior, uh, the diagnosis often becomes uh, autism. So that's the second reason, right? So one is deficiency, second is toxins. The third and a really, really big thing that we've seen that also gives us very good results is when we look at the gut health. So gut health, is directly tied to a lot of uh, issues with cognitive health, right? So, because gut is where, uh, especially with children, young children with autism, what we've seen is the more gut dysfunction they have, the more uh, behavioral issues they have, because something's causing inflammation, something's causing pain, they are uncomfortable, they are in discomfort, like if they eat, and they might not have the vocabulary to kind of describe it or to articulate what is really going on. So they'll show erratic behavior, they might show repetitive behavior, they might show aggressive behavior after a meal when they're like, you know, actually experiencing a lot of pain and trouble. And parents can't read these signs and that's one more place where we've seen like uh, the diagnosis itself is not doing justice to the child. So gut, deficiencies, toxins. The fourth is if the child is eating uh, inflammatory food. Um, any of you aware of things like gluten here? Heard of gluten and its impact on the brain? Um, uh, many people have uh, I think allergy to gluten. And uh, in, one, um, uh, in one of the webinars which I attended, uh, I think you must have heard of uh, Dr. Kadam Ali. Sorry, um, your, your face is again getting cut off. So then when your voice yeah, is... If, uh, if you have heard of... Uh, Millets or uh, Dr. Thadar uh, diet. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, actually the uh, atta that we eat is uh, uh, loaded with poisons. It is poisonous. Right. And uh, combined with gluten, 
it causes a havoc in our uh, gut and uh, our uh, body and this is the main reason that uh, people get these uh, diseases uh, uh, diabetes cholesterol uh, blood pressure along with sugar and uh, rice so uh, it's a big subject but uh, this is the uh, uh, what can i say gist of the okay uh, what gluten is so gluten is harmful it might not necessarily be the main culprit here yeah, and uh, diabetes and everything right. but gluten is harmful so gluten is this protein that's found in uh, primarily in wheat but also other grains like rye and barley and sometimes even in oats if it's processed in the same plant but what gluten does is it it could triggers gut inflammation secondly it can also cross the blood brain so it it gets released in your blood stream and it can cross the blood brain barrier and start causing infection there's a book by this dr david perlmutter that speaks of this it, it's called the grain brain and gluten is actually quite um, harmful to even young children's brains especially if the child is sensitive to gluten right so we've seen that kids who are eating gluten even dairy can trigger uh, this sometimes in some children so gluten dairy sugar of course i mean even in kids who are not on the spectrum if they eat sugar we see how uh, they actually the entire dopamine cycle the neurotransmitters get messed up and the the body also goes into this hyper kind of a mode hyper energetic mode so sugar is something that um, impacts even adults brains negatively but um, if if like if the child is showing tendencies towards being on the spectrum or if there is some degree of uh, uh, behavior that's not fitting into the normal whatever is normal according to doctors sugar can make it worse right so sugar dairy gluten and uh, even soy and soy products especially uh, in, uh, this uh, soy sauce which has a lot of uh, monosodium glutamate so all of these artificial preservatives artificial foods also can trigger neuroexcitatory effects in the brain and then in over the long term it, it just triggers like these abnormal behaviors that you start believing or interpreting is the child's original uh, view of being itself so inflammatory food is the fourth cause the fifth cause is of course uh, any sort of stress right like see a child's primary desire is to feel safe um and that's what adults in their life are supposed to do otherwise the child learns and grows on its own right they're not really supposed to put children in school and i mean i, I have a certain perspective on uh, children and what we are doing to them as a collective but children without going to school also can learn they can learn from nature they can learn from just watching and observing but as adults we are meant to ensure their physical safety and to a degree their emotional safety now children when they don't feel safe when they start feeling threatened that that thing can get recorded as trauma or stress in their brains because i i work with uh, a lot of people for their mental health um we we have a program on that and i primarily work on that and what i've seen is a lot of people who experience so this is not so much to do with like kids on the spectrum but i'm just talking of even adults who come to us right uh, a lot of people who experience depression anxiety uncertainty like fear uh, and just aren't in the right place in terms of their mental stability often the roots are in their childhood and the childhood trauma right so uh, even kids like this this particular child that i spoke of uh the entire behavior change the exhibition of those changes in behavior started after this particular instance of being separated from parents for a long period of time especially during a period when uh there was so much uncertainty and fear in the air right like everywhere on tv everyone was talking of covid and like papers everyone was afraid and then the child was separated from parents for such a long period of time and that was the so that really triggered the behavior change um i have also seen this so i don't know in your research uh, sanjay samir if you come across uh, vaccine injuries as being one of the causes for kids actually to uh, kids who are who are actually meeting their developmental milestones and then suddenly because uh, of of the ingredients of a vaccine that they were given right like childhood vaccination schedules and post vaccine the injury or it's, it's also called as so there's a vars database it's vaccine adverse events uh so it's that database has reported a lot of kids actually falling into the spectrum 
after a vaccine injury. I, have you have you seen like have you found that in your research, Sanjay? Because you must have been studying this for a while. Uh, is it uh, because of uh, vaccines are uh, are loaded with uh, lead and mercury? Is it aluminium, is the... mercury, lead. Uh, in fact, the um, COVID shield even has PEG, polyethylene glycol. So I'm not an anti-vaxxer. My own daughter, I gave her all vaccines uh, according to the schedule until she was five. But then as I started researching more, I realized that um, maybe it was okay if she was exposed to the whatever the disease that we were preventing by vaccination and developed her own immunity instead of injecting her with ingredients that were not really safe for the body. Because there have been instances, there have been a lot of instances of uh, kids getting impacted uh, post-vaccines. Not not just COVID, but like even the earlier ones. So yeah. It's, it's it's yeah. So you see, see uh, MMR, I think it is called uh, the measles and whatever. That vaccine was supposed to be a culprit, though yeah. it was later on cleared. Uh, see, as a parent of an autistic child, I what I have observed is, uh, it's very obvious. Initially, we want to find out why. Yeah. Why did this happen? But uh, there is no clear answer, given the complexity of the disorder. Um, at least at this point, science does not definitely tell you. Um, it doesn't say it's vaccine. It doesn't uh, tell you what caused, causes an autism disorder. Uh, my my uh, learning has been, as parents, the best thing is to keep that question aside and rather focus on uh, what do you what do, you do? to, to um, give the child a better opportunity to function in a neurotypical world? Yeah. Uh, rather than bothering about why it happened, it happened. Whatever has happened, caused it, it has happened. But you did mention, for example, um, you might observe even for normal people, neurotypical people, but for autistic people, there is a big. Uh, linkage with the gut health yeah. um, and uh, things like that, right, which can help them. Uh, autism is not a disease, it's a disorder. It is all and right. yeah, so uh, the success lies in uh, how we as neurotypical can understand uh, an autistic person and help that person adapt to our world because we are more in number three. Probably if yeah. in the future, yeah. if there's a I time when... Like, even the yeah. word autism is something that I don't like using, but it's something that people like, like, you know, they recognize the word, right? I, I usually call yeah. these kids yeah. they are neurodivergent because they're really neurodivergent more than anything else, right? They see the world differently. They, they hear yeah. the world differently. They, they smell it. They are just smell. different. They are just different. Yeah. The problem is we are forcing them to be like us. Exactly, right? Uh, and that is, is the whole problem. problem. All the parents. Yeah. That um, and if, the, if, if at all the way the rate is increasing at the percentage, if at all a time comes when they are in majority than us, then we will become the atypical. I, I um, honestly think, Sanjay, that uh, like, see, like this is my personal perspective, but I think all of us are on the spectrum in some way or the other. Okay. All of us have spectrum. All of us. You're right. right. All, all of us are in the spectrum. spectrum. Yeah. And like, I... I, I see things differently. I really do. Uh, and like I have a friend who can who can um, hear colors. Like she can really hear colors and she functions in a neurotypical world like a proper, she, she was in the corporate world. No one would like yeah, yeah. No, we all are. Doctor, right? yeah, yeah. But a lot when of you us start are how uh, kids on the spectrum are identified, like you start looking at the specific things. See, one is of course when when they just can't function physically, also, right? That's that's extreme. But often uh, you're just neurodivergent, which means your your sensory system, your nervous system looks at things, identifies things. So, a sensory experience of the world is slightly different from what most of us have agreed on. As this is like. Most of us might call a color red, but a neurodivergent person might think of it as blue and then it's their definition of blue and then everybody else is telling it's red and that's why you're wrong. So... See, one of the important things to realize is that development milestones are different. So as parents, we start jumping up and down when we see that 
my son is not speaking whereas you know my my elder kid was speaking at this age or, or my neighbor's son is speaking at this age the development timelines are different mm -hmm. uh, certain skills they may never pick up the way we pick up right and certain things skills they have which we cannot you know, even yeah. imagine like my son is like a you know computer he can tell you exactly when an event happened on what date and you know i have no clue and it will be right yeah. all the time he takes just two minutes to fix a cubic cube right so you know i will sit the whole day and i will not be able to do it uh, and then you know but i still feel that he is not quote unquote normal right so yeah, because because 80% of the world is behaving in a certain way oh, and, and he will he may not be able to do many things yeah. that we do in a typical world so right. uh, they are just uh, and again it's it's a spectrum you know there are people in the spectrum who are not even able to talk or right. uh, they have exactly. are intellectually challenged right. so it's a it's a big problem and now the the prop, the thing as parents we have to figure out is what are the levers we have to make their life comfortable basically what we are trying to and do is make that, their life comfortable that's what we focus on right so when i speak of blood tests or when i speak of advanced tests like for the gut microbiome or when i look at these things it's basically to understand okay the, the these are different people how is it that we can support them better because sometimes if some of the empty fetcher gene that i spoke of earlier right so let's say there's a mutation there now the child can't process things like folate and glycine and creatinine normally because there's a genetic issue itself in that right now let's say you have a amazing car but then you 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 don't fill petrol and you fill diesel in it that car is not going to run so you have to first figure out whether this car needs petrol or diesel before attempting to run the car right it's the same when it comes to nutrition you really have to understand what is it that this person's brain and body needs to function optimally is this person getting it all child adult whoever i mean that is my standard approach for any kind of dysfunction even even for my own sake i i keep doing my blood work every 6 months to see if everything internally is okay or not right so that becomes really important uh, in kids who are on the spectrum because they might not even be able to articulate things right like a vitamin c deficiency often shows up as uh, uh, irritable gums later it becomes bleeding gums and all that initially it will be like gums that are sore you, you know might have trouble while chewing or wounds that are healing slowly now a child who doesn't have the vocabulary to explain that they might not even tell you that but that is causing something in the body over time that might reduce immunity like we've seen so many kids especially the younger ones who go for all these cognitive behavior therapies and all right they have very poor immunity and what happens is because their immunity is low they go for these therapy sessions and then they get exposed to something and then they fall sick and then they can't go for therapy for a couple of weeks and then entire progress gets stopped so we've seen this right so if we help when we not if when we help the child actually build their immune system then whatever other uh, additional support mechanisms they have to kind of especially for kids who either have uh, trouble integrating with society right like that's where the cognitive behavior therapy comes in or when it's like actual cognitive skills with vocabulary and numbers and all of that so what we've seen is if we help them build their immunity up and if we make their body stable then they're able to go for these uh, sessions which then contributes to progress so that we've seen with a few kids uh, helping them fix their gut microbiome has been a big big game changer for a lot of kids right because that's something that most most of them don't have the vocabulary and uh, ability to articulate like something's happening or i'm feeling like acidity they wouldn't even know what to say right but you fix that and their food gets digested better they are symptom free they are pain free and they're absorbing nutrition better and then obviously that starts reflecting in their overall health um even toxins actually right so these could come from environment these could come from medication that they've been on this could even like come from the the hotly contested vaccine uh, theory that's there but sometimes like if the aluminum and mercury overload has happened because of childhood vaccination if you put in the right kind of binders right like uh, zeolites and uh, silica and modified citrus pectin and all of that that can help the body detox so we actually run advanced detox uh with like 9 10 days where we bring in binders where we help the liver open up uh, all the phase 4 pathways and everything and help the body eliminate these toxins that brings a turnaround sometimes in kids right and that's why so 
the the question is not so much about why did this happen as much as why uh, are we seeing these symptoms right now and what can we do about it so that's where it goes right so we do blood tests and then we do advanced tests so sometimes the advanced test can be like a gut microbiome i'll show you what that looks like sometimes the advanced test can be like an oat test which is an organic acid test where you're looking at the metabolites of all different organic acids in the body to see if nutrients are working well or let me just pull up the um, gut microbiome test and the oat test give me one minute In the meanwhile, can I ask you a question, Mukta? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, as we uh, as we spoke about the uh, heavy metals, hmm. and that is causing causing a big difficulty here, and we especially talked about aluminium. What about aluminium uh, utensils? Because they also, when we quit, can yeah. aluminium utensils they le like uh, aluminium is leaching out in the food, right? This so is also maybe the wood big cause, right? Yeah, yeah, we don't recommend aluminum. Actually, the best utensils, I'll come to solutions. Uh, I just wanted to show the uh, test ones and I have to kind of hide the name. Okay. So I'm showing you what the GI map and why I'm showing this to you, right? Because um, you might not even realize, but in our gut, there are so many different uh, pathogens. So this is just one person's gut microbiome test, but what it does is it tests your a stool sample for all possible uh, microbes, including the good ones. Like, do you have enough of a balance of the good ones? Do you have enough of the, uh, the ones that are going to really support you? Or do you have too many of the bad ones, right? And uh, you'll see, like, in this person's case, the balance is quite out of back, which was creating a lot of uh, gut issues. And that was then triggering the uh, other physical issues that we were seeing. So for parents, uh, I, I mean, I really recommend this for kids. It gives us deep insights into what's happening with their gut and not just the pathogens and everything. It also tells us about these things, right? So elastase, for example, if, if enzymes are, if not enough enzymes are being produced by the pancreas, then uh, digesting, breaking down protein, carbs, fat, everything is going to get impacted. Secretary IgA is something that's really important for uh, a proper immune response. If that is not being um, produced, then even the gut lining is going to be quite inflamed. So this is one of those tests that I was talking of. And the other one is uh, this oat test, which uh, actually showcases um, the presence of toxins. What is the test called? This one is oat test. The first one that I showed you was the GI map. That's the uh, gastrointestinal map. The second one is called as an oat. So oat stands for organic acid test. If you see the names here, right? These are all different, different organic acids inside the body. So some of them are markers of uh, excess yeast and fungus. Again, why yeast and fungus? Because if there is too much yeast and fungus growing even in the gut or... Um, these pre create their own metabolites, like these things, right? And then these metabolites are quite toxic to the body. And if these are in high levels, then they can start impacting brain function. There are bacterial markers that can do that. There are close like this one. And then you have the entire, uh, your nutrient cycle. So the oat test is really comprehensive, especially when it comes to kids on the spectrum. I found it really useful because it tells us what is happening with the metabolism also, right? Like your oxalate cycle, your glycolytic cycle, uh, then the mitochondria, how well are those mitochondria functioning? Um, then the neurotransmitters, which are super important when it comes to kids on the spectrum, because if your uh, tryptophan, dopamine, all of these are not being produced in the right quantities, even responding to stimuli or appropriate social behavior or even social connectedness, is something that starts getting impacted. So it's important to know uh, if these neurotransmitter metabolites are in the right uh, range or not. 
uh, fatty acid oxidation that tells us about uh, the entire process of creating energy. And then these nutritional markers, right? So your all the B vitamins, are they actually in the right uh, ratio or not? So this basically gives us a lot of insight and this one tells us about detoxification, right? Are the detoxification pathways working or not? Or is this in excess toxic load? This talks about protein metabolism. Is the protein actually being utilized properly or not? So um, both are extremely good tests when it comes to kids on the spectrum. Now, whether you do these tests or not, whether you go into advanced blood work or not, what we have found, so these are the tips that I would kind of want you to uh, note down and just apply at home. Um, I'll, I'll go to the utensils question itself because it's really important because see, whatever the food is cooked in is kind of going to go into the body. So ideally, just stainless steel utensils for cooking like Indian style of which is on the gas. And if it's baking or something, then glass, like borosil is really great because it's pretty stable. But glass and stainless steel are the two things that I recommend for cooking because these are both inert. They don't react with the ingredients, whether it's acid or whether it's alkaline or whether it's been cooked for a very long time. And they don't leach into food. You don't want any aluminum going into your child's body, not even your body, because aluminum can go and deposit in the brain. Um, so utensils and even the personal care products that you would use at home, right? So the soaps, the shampoos, the um, the um, even the like things like mosquito repellents and all of that. You want to maintain a toxin-free environment. So, like I personally find that you don't even need to use too many things on your face and your body. But uh, if at all you want to, then look for brands that are sulfate and parabens free, uh, that are organic. Uh, I think uh, uh, if Ronit is still here or Pranav, I think uh, after the session, maybe on Monday, we can email uh, a list of our uh, toxin free products to all the people who attended this uh, webinar. Uh, sure, Mukda, sure. Well, well. Yeah. And then uh, that's environment and the thing about food is like I spoke of gluten and sugar. So usually for most kids on the spectrum, uh, rice is something that they tolerate very well, white rice, right? So I would recommend avoiding gluten. I would recommend, recommend keep off sugar and dairy. And dairy you can reintroduce after a while and see if it's actually causing any kind of symptoms. Because if you keep it off for a couple of months and then bring it back, the body will tell or even the behavior will tell if, if this particular food is working or not. So these are things to eliminate. And the fourth one is seed oils. Okay, so when I say seed oils, um, Tanuj, you want to tell us what are seed oils? You are our academy student. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was expecting that. <laughs> so, so all the, uh, I would say the uh, all the vegetable oils, the uh, seed oils are like grounded oils, and even mustard oils and sesame is also uh, comes into that, which is high in omega-6 and cause inflammatory reactions. Is inflammatory actually very, very uh, for the body. And also all the refined oils, canola oils, everything, <laughs> which we see yeah. a lot of. So basically, marketing. all these oils that are sourced from vegetable seeds, uh, so groundnut, uh, mustard, sunflower, safflower, sesame, uh, canola, all of these oils, right? They actually are very high in omega-6 fatty acids and they're very inflammatory. So they didn't even exist in our... Seed oils first came as lubricants. Then they got industrialized into the human food chain, right? So they didn't exist. So when it comes to elimination, these are the four things I would say you eliminate, which is uh, gluten, dairy, seed oils, and sugar. And of course, processed food because... Processed food has things like monosodium glutamate. It has all these colors and additives and preservatives. Like yesterday, I got to somebody's house. We were actually starting off with a new project with this person, and uh, on the table, on the table, there was like you know packets and packets of biscuits, like these bulk orders of biscuits. They're like who buys this? They're like once a month we go and stock up on biscuits, and then I just turned over the packet. I was like just read the label and tell me. So initially there was uh, refined wheat flour and sugar. Three, four ingredients that sounded like food. The remaining list was all a chemical factory. Okay, so um, 
whatever additive es122 and then just just chemical names right that's in a simple biscuit so most of these processed foods to kind of increase shelf life to increase uh, stability and to kind of make them taste good despite staying on the shelf for so long a lot of things are added in that our body doesn't know how to process it it's, it our body doesn't recognize these ingredients as food and therefore our system crashes but it's a slow crash it's not instant so you keep putting this over time over time over time your genes will keep getting modified and you'll keep creating more and more dysfunctions so gluten sugar seed oils dairy and processed foods this much to be avoided but there is so much more that can be included right so let's start off with the first most important thing which is protein every kid needs protein every kid needs good quality protein for everything from your brain to your muscle to your bone development and the best source of protein uh, are eggs fish red meat red meat is okay for people who say you should be afraid of red meat for cholesterol uh, are climbing up the wrong ladder when it comes to nutrition and chicken is still okay but chicken is higher in omega 6 fatty acids than uh, red meat so i still kind of keep chicken levels low but eggs red meat fish prawns uh, fish that are small right so you don't want to do many like big surmai and those big fish because those are higher in mercury but uh, things like uh, the smaller fish prawns these are absolutely okay so that's protein then comes your fat so i said keep seed oils off and the obvious question will be okay what can i cook my food and eat in so that's ghee and butter okay so ghee butter coconut oil three are very very safe for human health uh, these these have advantages they don't have disadvantages and the third then the macronutrient is carbs right because people say avoid carbs um sometimes i've seen parents put uh, their kids on ketogenic diets so while keto diets work well for kids who uh, have bouts of epilepsy um long term ketosis for any human being is not really something that i would recommend it's not a sustainable practice so carbs are important carbs have multiple functions in the body beyond just uh, producing energy and then what kind of carbs right so rice is okay millets are okay and all fruits are okay okay as long as you're sourcing them from organic sources because you don't want uh, fertilizers and pesticides going into not just your child but even your body so that's fruits and then vegetables um uh, i might be the first nutritionist who says that vegetables are not really important uh but you don't need to eat a lot of vegetables you actually get more nutrition from meat uh when it comes to like even micronutrients right like if you if you're someone who eats liver you'll get so many nutrients from liver so vegetables are great to bring variety to add fiber to the diet but um, avoid too many leafy greens especially with kids who have uh, sensitivities because things like palak and kale and all of these leaves right they often have a lot of anti nutrients like oxalates and all of that so these can cause issues in the body but uh, goats are okay all the dudis and the pumpkins carrots are all okay um but like vegetables don't need to be forced like if 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 a child likes them if they enjoy the taste in small quantities vegetables are okay but majority of the nutrition is going to come from the protein fat and carbohydrates that i mentioned for micronutrients like this like even when we were learned nutrition in college we were taught that vegetables give you micronutrients and you need to get those but your b complex nutrients are not there in most vegetables right um, your um, magnesium is not there only in anything now is magnesium is super depleted so for micronutrients you need to supplement you really do need to i am not somebody who likes popping pills i prefer getting my nutrition from food but given today's food supply and the depleted quality of the soil we need to supplement with basic ones so zinc magnesium b complex vitamin d are important and if your child has gut issues then a good quality probiotic also become important so these are the nutrients uh, apart from that things that really help are also a proper circadian rhythm so sleeping uh, on time uh this room because we do late evening video calls we have a white light in this room but uh, otherwise ideally we place white lights in your house and put yellow lights everywhere because uh, that is what helps the circadian rhythm best 
So switch white lights off and put yellow lights because that mimics the natural sun setting light. You want your child to be in bed by 9, 9.30, not later than that. And sunlight exposure is completely underrated. It really helps a lot of children. So let your child be outside in the sun as many times in the day. Every time of the day actually has a different uh, frequency of sunlight. Right? So infrared, uh, ultraviolet, the combinations keep changing depending on the time of the day. And the more exposure the child you, uh, your child has to different um, times of the sun, the better it is for their body. So sun is something that's really important. And of course, clean water, filtered water. Uh, we, we had one case where the child was not drinking, like, like totally in a day, the child was just drinking about 100 ml of water because the mother is like, he just doesn't like water. And he had severe constipation and so many gut issues and like, you know, just very lethargic and uh, wouldn't do activities and all of that. And the child was just basically dehydrated. So we kind of brought in different, different strategies to increase water consumption and fluid consumption. And there was a lot of change in, in that child. Um, again, that child hadn't come to us for like uh, as an autism case. It was just a parent who wanted um, some kind of intervention with the child's health. But we saw like a dramatic change, right, in the health when we increased water intake. So food, sun, water, um, avoiding things that are harmful, which is like toxins from the environment, um, foods that can cause inflammation, and then making sure the micronutrient needs some. Like magnesium, again, is such an important nutrient when it comes to brain health. So if a child is deficient in magnesium, you won't even know it because no one checks for magnesium status. But uh, that's something that I would highly recommend supplementing with. Um, yeah, but that, those are the tips I wanted to give. I'm, we can we can just have conversations. You can ask me questions now. When it when it comes to water, uh, don't you think like RO waters are doing bad because they are totally depleted from the TDS is so low that all yeah. the are so there now it's a conflict between allowing. So otherwise, you see groundwater is quite contaminated. It and it's yeah. contaminated. No, can, like the normal filter can be used instead of RO. Huh, but the normal filter is not going to eliminate a lot of these heavy metals and all of that like in water, right? So I, I do RO for my water, but then I replenish my electrolytes in that. So when I drink water, I add... Um, see, primary electrolytes we need from water, even magnesium, right, came to us ancestrally from spring water. Like when water would flow over rocks, that water would get remineralized. I mean, that water would get mineralized because of the rocks and then we would be able to get minerals into our body. So, because I eat meat and all that, I get quite a bit of minerals that are coming in from the meat itself. And then the ones that I know I will end up deficiencies with, which is magnesium, potassium, and even sodium, I add it to my water. So, my first water in the morning, the one that I take for my workout also is mineralized water. Because RO ensures that I'm not getting any junk from outside. Because otherwise, I won't know, right? There's no control on that. I can always remineralize my water. And it then I'm taking... Banned. It is banned from green. Supreme Court now in Delhi. So RO, RO is banned? Yeah. What are you saying? I'll send you the uh, the order uh, of that. But RO is banned? Yeah. Reverse osmosis. RO is banned in Delhi. And that's the Supreme Court order. Mm -hmm. So there was a petition filed again by the company. But again, it was rejected by Supreme Court. All right. That is interesting. I don't like the government getting into our plates and to our health. But anyway, uh, yeah, so also if uh, someone wants to learn more about uh, detoxing and toxins, I'm actually doing a masterclass on the 14th. So that's like a complete focus on detox itself. If someone wants to learn that, just for, not even for like your kid, but just for yourself, if you want to learn about detox, uh, it's an advanced masterclass. I want to ask a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, is it necessary to avoid uh, non-veg food during the rainy season? Uh, what is the uh, logic behind it? Non-veg? Non-veg food during the rainy season. No, I think, see, one is fish is kind of avoided because uh, that's the breeding season, right? Like, that's that's what I know in terms of fish itself. Uh, there's that entire Shravan mine and all, where there's 
the the breeding season for fish so you want to avoid killing them when they are going to create more of themselves otherwise non veg and monsoon might be more to do with if you eat out generally india restaurant hygiene practices are not the best right so there's a very high chance of cross contamination and getting kind of infected but made at home non veg bought from a safe source is no problem at all any other questions cool okay. so if like the things apart from the food and everything i have said i would really recommend getting uh, blood work done for basic like just to see if there are nutrient deficiencies or not like the b complex and magnesium and vitamin d and everything if you want to look at advanced tests for the gut microbiome if you want to look at advanced tests for like uh, the organic acids and all then that's secondary but yeah like if you want to learn more find out about the internal health those are something that i really found useful when we work with kids on the spectrum but uh, who gives these uh, tests like uh, we know we i mean we have tied up so the basic blood work you can get done from any lab in india Okay. Um, because thankfully in India we still have some degree of self ownership when it comes to health. You can go to a lab and say, "Create this, do it," or they'll come home and take the sample. The advanced ones that I showed, you know, the oat test and the gut microbiome one, that we've actually tied up with different different labs across the US. So in case you want to get those done, then you can reach out to us and we'll help you get the test. Because those. Like the GI map, so it's a stool sample, right? So it needs all the biohazard certificate. Like it's like it's not a biohazard certificate from a doctor, and then the FedEx courier and everything. It's kind of a complicated process. But because we were finding it so useful, uh, we just thought of partnering with these labs and uh, starting to do those. So that even the oat test is a US test, but we can help you figure out how to get the samples across. So that's something we do. Not our primary. service our work is like we do a three month program right anybody comes to us with whatever disease dysfunction we run a three three month program called alive and we work on mostly reversing like especially adult lifestyle diseases we usually reverse them uh, and then the tests and all are part of the work that we do i just showed these tests to you guys because often the parents don't know that advanced options exist and you can find out what is going on and actually not just find out but also uh, create solutions based on the finding that's why i showed it and uh, pranav is there from the team here so hi pranav hi mukta yeah in case you want uh, to kind of learn more about the test or something he'll reach out to you tomorrow monday i don't know when when will you reach out to them pranav somebody is interested tomorrow sir tomorrow so he can call you and talk to you and like see if you're really interested and help you figure that out but um it's a good thing to do and it's like i i got my own gi map test done also because i wanted to see what my gut was like inside um we were also tied up with a dna testing lab did you did did you know that tanush we tied up with this dna lab yes, i i got to know i got to Yeah, so and that's like a once in a life, like it's a one time thing. At least the GI map not keep changing based on your life events. Yeah. If you yeah, got an event, you get to know all, everything about your body. Like that. if you do more. DNA and if you do your GI map, if you do oat and if you get these three things, you have such a great picture of uh, what's really going on. So I I'm gonna get my DNA test probably so done maybe next month. But it's very interesting. It's like. Full mystery of your body gets revealed with that. But anyway, I, sorry guys for digressing. So Tanoj is part of our academy. We also run an academy. So we do three things. One is we have the three month disease reversal program called Alive, and then uh, we have this academy called the I Thrive Academy where we teach functional nutrition uh, to anyone who wants to learn. That's a four month program. You are batch ten, no Tanoj? I'm batch nine. Batch nine. I was not that far. <laughs> and then yeah, one thing uh, i want to also... share here uh, if you allow me so i used to think that i have lot of knowledge about nutrition because i <laughs> did so many courses and all that but after doing functional nutrition from here that was uh, you know i got to know that uh, i wasn't uh, at any any level 
before doing the course and now if i <laughs> see myself yes yet to learn a lot of things but now i can really say that functional nutrition has really given me a lot of things especially i thrive <laughs> so you know as much as uh, i can give gratitude to you guys is blessed <laughs> thank you once again you're most welcome i am so happy that you learned so much like really and i have spoken uh, about my health in the group as well the academic group that i have reversed it so i'll soon put uh, soon put another case of my wife as well she had a lot of problem in her gut i am so to, proud of you because you are like literally using the knowledge that it was designed to teach. she used to actually get lot of pain in her uh, periods now it has been relieved and wow. all because of awesome. the knowledge which i have learned from <laughs> i try super thank you so much you're most welcome yeah so we have the academy and then we also make our own supplements called i try essentials right so if you want to get like your peak of we make eight now your dp complex zinc probiotic magnesium so we make our own supplements as well um anyway it's it's nine i need to end this session i hope you all found uh, lots of value in it thank you so much for showing up uh, you have a great weekend and uh, ronit has shared the uh, information about uh, how to reach out to us pranav will any anyway be contact you and talk to you all right sure bye bye